In this video, we'll be exploring the world of carbon paper copies. So what is carbon paper in the first place? Carbon paper is essentially an early form of technology used to duplicate documents in the past. And over here, I have a pack of carbon paper right now. And if you take out one sheet of carbon paper from their packs, you will see that it's made out of two components. There is one part, which is the paper itself, that holds everything together. And then there is the second part, which contains this shiny blue color surface at the back. This backing surface consists of a bunch of wax and pigments that are suspended within the wax. And this is the primary mechanism as to how the carbon paper is allowing a person to duplicate documents using it. To use carbon paper, what you simply have to do is this. Place one sheet of paper that you would like to be the carbon copy to be used. Then place your carbon paper down on this sheet of paper with the wax side down. Then place your paper that represents the original on top of it. Now, simply use a ballpoint pen and draw or write whatever you like on the original document. When you remove the layers and separate them, you will realize that the carbon copy and the originals now are identical to one another. Of course, since I'm using black color ink, one of them looks black and the other one looks blue. But you can see that I have successfully made a duplicate of my handwritten document using the power of carbon paper. The nice thing about using carbon paper is not only can you use it for making duplicates of handwritten documents, you can also use it to make duplicates of typewritten documents. This is because typewriters usually act using the action of pressure in order to print something on the sheet of paper. When you strike the keyboard on a typewriter, what happens is that most of the time, a type bar will fly towards the platen where the paper is held. It strikes an ink ribbon which then delivers the ink towards the paper and you will have an impression of what you have typed. Since it operates using the action of pressure, you can actually make use of this bunch of pressure in order to be able to make additional duplicates of your typewritten document. By placing carbon papers and additional sheets of paper behind your original document, you can make use of the pressure in order to cause the carbon paper below to deliver the ink towards the paper that is located behind the originals. Therefore, you can assemble a carbon pack in order to make duplicates of the original typewritten document that you have. Most people in the past were expected to use a typewriter to make around 8 or even 10 carbon copies with very thin sheets of paper. I do not have the necessary skills or equipment because most of my typewriters are portable typewriters, but I'm able to make around 5 carbon copies usually before the carbon copy looks a little bit blur. So we'll try that out by making 5 carbon copies. If you want to assemble 5 carbon copies and one original, you need 6 sheets of ordinary paper with five sheets of carbon paper. It is recommended that you find paper that is thinner so that the pressure from the typewriter can be delivered easily towards the rest of the carbon copies. What you simply have to do to assemble your carbon pack is this. Place one sheet of paper down, then place a sheet of carbon paper, carbon side down or the waxy side down onto that sheet of paper. Then place another sheet of paper on top of the carbon paper and you keep repeating this process until you end off with your final sheet of ordinary paper which will represent your original. Now the challenge is to feed it into your typewriter of choice. Most of the time what you can do is to simply feed in a half sheet of paper inside the typewriter. This engage the line space ratcheting so that the typewriter can spin freely. Place the carbon pack in a way such that the carbon pack will be placed in front of the half sheet of paper and behind the platen rolls. Then simply pull the half sheet of paper through and you will see that your carbon pack is fed straight. If your typewriter is unable to disengage the line space ratcheting, for example if you're using an electronic typewriter, what you can do is the following method. Take the half sheet of paper and then fold it in half so that you form a sort of a pocket. Then place your carbon pack into this particular pocket and then feed this entire package into your typewriter. Once you have spinned the typewriter platen so that you feed in the paper through the typewriter, you can simply remove this particular sheet of paper and you're ready to begin typing on your carbons. And you'll realize that all your carbon papers and original documents are fed straight into the machine. Once you're done typing on one of these typewriters, you can remove your carbon pack out of the machine to see that you have made your duplicate documents. And I have done so already earlier and right now I can show it to you. So from one single typewritten document, I have managed to generate an additional five carbon copies below. So I can now distribute to friends or other places or keep some as backups. 
So it is quite fascinating that you can use carbon paper to be able to make duplicates of typewritten documents. So now let's analyze how the typewritten documents look uh, with a closer look to see how the typewriter has performed. So when we remove the original, you can see that the first carbon copy looks pretty impressive. There's a very nice sharp text that has been generated and everything is of an even blackness. So this looks very impressive. As we move down the carbon copies, you can start to see that the blackness and the sharpness of the text begins to reduce. In fact, you can also see that the blackness and the printing becomes uneven as we move further down the carbon copies. Indeed, this is a struggle of using a manual typewriter to type carbon copies. When you reach the fourth or the fifth carbon copies, any inconsistencies with your typing action will become more apparent. The operator's finger strength and technique really plays a part as to how presentable the final outcome would look like. The fortunate thing for us is that human technology constantly improves. So gradually, we invent new machines in order to assist us with making much better and sharper and consistent typewritten documents. One of these inventions is the electric typewriter and subsequently the electronic typewriter. Electric typewriters again? George, I've just come from Perry Brothers. They've been getting the most wonderful results with the new electric economy. So I have an electronic typewriter with me and it is the Canon QS300 series, which is right here. So you can see that it looks similar to an ordinary typewriter, but there are some differences. The keyboard over here is essentially made out of electronics. So when you type on this, what happens is that electric signals get sent to an electronic circuit board, which will cause a bunch of daisy wheels to spin and a hammer or solenoid to strike the paper consistently. A light touch or a heavy touch? makes absolutely no difference. All type impressions are exactly the same. The result is a uniform appearance on a typewritten page. Some of these typewriters even included adjustments or sensors in order to be able to allow you to vary the strength of the typewriter while simultaneously allowing the operator to simply use a light and gentle touch on the keyboard in order to be able to generate more carbon copies. By simply moving this impression control, the typist can increase the number of clear, legible carbon copies with no increased effort. I have already experimented by typing out the letter, the same letter, on my electronic typewriter. And I have one over here. So again, the same typewriter, uh, electronic typewriter instead, now generates up to five carbon copies as usual. And we can now analyze how the carbon copies look closely. As we look down on the first carbon copy, we immediately see improvements. It, the blackness of the carbon copy is much more intense as compared to our manual typewriter and everything looks of a consistent blackness. When we move down to the second, third and fourth carbon copies, you can see that the consistency is maintained. Of course, some things you cannot avoid. For example, you can see that the sharpness of the carbon copies generated gradually deproves as we move down the carbon copies, exactly identical to the manual typewriter. So these are some of the weaknesses that we can't really get rid of, even if we use an electronic or electric typewriters. When shopping for carbon papers, you may encounter two types of carbon papers. The first carbon paper that you will encounter is known as a handwritten carbon paper which is the blue color one that I'm holding up right now. The second one that you may find is a typewriter carbon paper, which is exactly like this one that I'm showing over here. So let me put this aside and let me grab out a carbon paper that is for the typewriter from a different brand. So these are two sheets of carbon paper. One is for handwriting and one is for typewriting. And you'll notice that there are several differences. The first difference that you will notice is that the handwriting carbon paper is blue in color. The second difference you will see that is the typewriter carbon paper is much longer as compared to the handwritten carbon paper. There's a reason for this. With a longer carbon paper, you can actually perform this following trick when you're trying to separate the carbon papers away from the originals. Simply slit the corners of the carbon paper. Then what you do is, once you're done typing the carbon packs, simply pinch the corner that contains no carbon paper and grab on to the other end of the carbon paper that's dangling out from the carbon pack. Now, all you simply have to do is to pull them apart and they can separate easily. And most typewriter carbon papers are designed to be longer than the sheet of paper that they're used on to type so that it allows you to separate the carbon packs easily like so. When you're shopping for carbon papers, you may encounter a different kind of carbon paper as compared to those that I've shown so far. 
Here I have two carbon papers that are from different manufacturers. One of them is from Cores, this Carbon Plane Super 503, and the second one is from Pelican, this Carbon 1015G. They behave exactly identically. Essentially, they use the same technology, a bunch of wax and pigment that's suspended on a sheet of paper. This type of carbon paper, on the other hand, which I have right now, is known as the film solvent carbon paper, and it was invented around the 50s to be able to improve on the weaknesses of some of these carbon papers that I've shown so far. So what is actually the difference between the carbon papers? If we take out one sheet of this film solvent carbon paper, we can immediately see that it's very different from the standard carbon paper we are used to. Firstly, you can see that the backing is not paper anymore. It is made out of a plastic sort of film. The second thing is when you look at the underside of the carbon paper, the carbon paper's ink surface looks more, how do you say, uh, less waxy and more matte as compared to the regular wax-based carbon paper. So these carbon papers were made in the past in order to be able to improve on the technologies that were used for the traditional carbon papers. Although this type of ultra film or film solvent based carbon papers are relatively hard to come by these days. I have already performed the carbon copy test on the film solvent carbon paper and we can take a look at the results both using the electronic typewriter and the manual typewriter. When we take a look at the manual typewriter, you can see that the performance is relatively similar to the carbon papers. Although you can see that the wax-based carbon paper does offer certain improvements. For one thing, the wax-based carbon paper prints out a much darker imprint, especially on the first carbon copy. You can see that the film solvent carbon paper tends to look a little bit lighter as compared to the wax-based carbon paper. Although what the film solvent carbon paper offers that the wax paste cannot is essentially a sharper printout. So you can see that the text on the film solvent carbon paper looks a bit more sharper as compared to the wax based carbon paper. As we move down the carbon copies, however, you can start to see that the quality of the film solvent carbon paper starts to deprove. The text still appears sharp, but because of the lack of ink that is deposited on the piece of paper, the printout doesn't really look very presentable or legible. Things do improve when we use the electronic typewriter, which allows for more force to be applied when you type. So you can see that the first carbon copy looks relatively impressive. The printout is much sharper as compared to the wax-based carbon paper. But as we move down the carbon copies, you can still see the same problems occurring, where the text would appear a little bit more faded. So essentially, if you use a film solvent carbon paper, you would usually get sharper quality printouts. But if you use a wax-based carbon paper, you usually get darker quality printout. Seeing the printout of the film solvent-based carbon paper looks lighter as compared to the wax-based carbon paper, you may wonder that what's the point of getting the modern film solvent carbon paper as compared to the wax-based carbon paper. After all, the darker printout makes the wax-based carbon paper a little bit more legible as compared to the sharpness of the film solvent carbon paper. Well, there are some additional benefits to using the film solvent carbon paper that the wax-based carbon paper does not offer. If we take a random copy of their carbon copy duplicates that they have generated, let's say from the same generation and from the same machine, you can see that if I rub my fingers across the carbon copies, the film solvent carbon copies doesn't smudge that badly or doesn't even smudge at all. But if I use the wax-based carbon paper and I rub my fingers across it, you can see that the wax-based carbon paper smudges very easily. This smudging can make the carbon copies look a little bit undesirable as now your carbon copy copies and duplicates looks a little bit more dirty as compared to the regular film solvent carbon paper. Another thing is that they perform differently when they are crumpled. Now of course, do not crumple your carbon papers because you should, and this is why they are kept in envelopes like these because if you crumple the carbon papers, this might happen. Here I have two carbon papers, one is film solvent and one is a regular wax-based carbon paper, and I've already crumpled them to relatively an even amount. If I feed them through this particular typewriter, what you can see is that the film solvent-based carbon paper comes up relatively cleanly. But if you use the wax-based carbon paper and you crumple and you feed it through, what happens is that the folds and creases on the wax-based carbon paper sort of leave additional deposits onto your additional carbon copies. And this is very undesirable because it makes the carbon copies once again looks a little bit dirty and unpresentable. So the benefits of using this wax-based uh, carbon copies is that they offer darker printout. 
but the benefits of using the film based carbon paper is that it is crumple resistant, it is also able to resist smudging and it produces sharper text. The last test I would like to test is the longevity of these carbon papers. What I realized is that film solvent carbon papers tend to have a very poor shelf life. Most of the carbon papers that I buy sometimes do not appear in very good condition, but the wax based carbon paper usually appears better. In fact, if you use carbon papers and you keep them for the next use, they tend to dry out because the protective layers that were present when they were brand new are removed when you use it on a typewriter. So what I've done is that I have kept the papers for one week in my cupboard and I've used them to retype the same carbon copy letter again. And what I realized is that the film solvent carbon paper does not really perform as well as the wax based carbon paper. So if durability and darkness in text is what you need to prioritize, I would recommend using ordinary wax based carbon paper. But if you want sharpness in your text, crumple resistance, and you want your carbon copies to be smudge proof or smudge resistant, what I recommend is to use film solvent carbon paper, but of course, try to use fresh carbon paper when possible. You might wonder why is it that we do not use any more carbon papers for our modern duplication work? Well, the answer is simple. It's because technology has advanced to the point that we do not need carbon paper. Some of the technological advances that we have invented in order to overcome the need for carbon paper including the use of carbonless paper. So carbonless paper, well, it doesn't mean that it contains no carbon at all. It's essentially a type of paper that you can make carbon copy duplicates without the addition of carbon paper. You often find them in receipt booklets for making duplicates of handwritten receipts or you can find them fed into dot matrix printers or ordinary receipt printers for making duplicates of printed documents as well. The next invention that was very crucial in getting rid of carbon paper is the invention of the Xerox photocopier. The Xerox photocopier really was a groundbreaking invention in terms of allowing us to make duplicates of documents. Because now you don't just have to duplicate handwritten or typewritten documents, you can duplicate any document at any time. If you have a book, photo or magazine page that you would like to make duplicates of, well, the Xerox photocopier machine can do that just for you. Another thing is that the type of paper that you can use is greatly increased when you use these Xerox photocopying machines. As one advertisement showed that you can actually even use brown paper packaging material to print and make duplicates of your documents. You can even make as many carbon copies or as many duplicates as you like. So in the past with a typewriter you are limited to perhaps 10 carbon copies or if you use a stencil machine you can make up to 100 duplicates but any further than that you will need to retype the document again. But with a Xerox photocopying machine, you can make as many copies as you like from 100 to even thousands of copies if your printer is capable of doing this particular function. The last thing of course is that carbon paper really was quite troublesome to deal with. So unlike the Xerox photocopying machine, the carbon paper sometimes can tend to smudge if you make duplicates so it's a pretty messy process as compared to our modern photocopier which makes instantly clean copies when you, it is working properly. Another thing is that if you make a mistake on a carbon copy, it is very difficult or time consuming to erase. Most of my carbon copies that I've generated today, I just simply ignore the mistakes. But if you have to make perfect copies, every single typewritten carbon copy that you have would multiply the mistake by a factor of however many. So if I make five carbon copies, I now have to erase five carbon copies worth of mistakes plus the original. You can see in certain videos where people have to slowly uh, roll up the carbon copies and then erase each mistake one at a time before finally retyping the correction to correct the error out. The Xerox 2400 eliminates almost all of this. And because xerography is a dry process, it also ends this problem. This concludes our carbon paper analysis. I do hope that this video has been insightful for learning about how carbon paper was used in the past to make duplicates. And I do hope that this video shows us a greater appreciation on the modern technologies that we have today that allow us to make as many copies as we like with the new photocopying machines that we have available. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comments and I will see you guys next time in the next video.